Hey, it's Rick Kettner here. Let's explore three key insights from Measure What Matters by John Doerr. This book is all about how to use OKRs or objectives and key results in order to improve the focus, the alignment, and the accountability of your organization so that you can achieve bigger and better things. And this is an approach that has been used by many successful companies, including Google, Disney, Dropbox, LinkedIn, Slack, Spotify, and many others. It's especially popular in the technology sector, but it's an approach that can be applied to virtually any business. And in this book, legendary investor John Doerr explains how you too can benefit from the power of OKRs in order to achieve greater things with your organization. So let's dive into three of my favorite insights, beginning with insight number one, the basic structure behind OKRs. The core idea here is quite simple. OKRs provide a framework that you can use for setting and achieving goals within your organization. And again, OKR stands for objectives and key results. These are two very different things. So objectives are the what. What is it that you want to accomplish as a team or as an organization? You wanna get very clear on the concrete things that really matter within your business. And according to the book, what's recommended here is to really focus on significant, concrete, and ideally inspirational goals. This is what you wanna focus on when defining the objective that you're seeking to accomplish. Now, key results are very much the how. So objectives are the what, and key results are how you're gonna go about achieving that objective. And as described in the book, you wanna focus on things that are specific, time-bound, aggressive, yet realistic, and most important of all, measurable, and verifiable. You should be able to tell at any given moment whether or not a key result has been achieved. And typically for an objective, you're gonna have somewhere in the ballpark of three to five key results that when achieved are gonna result in the completion of the objective. So it's a very simple protocol for defining what it is that you wanna achieve and how you're going to go about achieving it. So I'll give you a quick example from the book. A business objective might be to create a healthy and productive work environment as a team scales to 150 employees. And that objective might be measured by the following key results. Number one, all employees have completed their performance review and feedback process. Number two, all employees have scored their quarter three OKRs within the first week of quarter four. And finally, new employees have completed the onboarding and training process. So each of those key results can be easily measured, you know, whether or not they have been completed. And when they've all been completed, then the objective will have been realized. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, why is this simple goal-setting protocol so popular? It seems like a relatively simple idea, but why are so many businesses adopting this and relying on this to improve focus, alignment, and accountability? So to explore that further, let's dive into insight number two, the four superpowers of OKRs. The real benefit of OKRs is in how they unlock opportunities for collaboration and transparency throughout an organization. And this is something that we're gonna come back to here in a minute. But first, I just wanna set the stage by unpacking what the book describes as the four superpowers of OKRs, beginning with superpower number one, focus and commit to priorities. The simple structure of OKRs really empowers leaders to be able to clearly define actionable goals. So rather than setting lofty or unattainable or unactionable goals, well, if you're gonna use the OKR framework, you not only have to define the objective, but exactly how that objective is going to be achieved. And so naturally, leaders are gonna focus on things that can be achieved, they can be broken down into individual key results, and of course, going through this entire process and being deliberate about setting clear objectives is naturally gonna to gravitate towards things that are really significant, because if you're gonna go through this entire meticulous process about defining an objective, 
and its key results, well, naturally, you're gonna focus on things that are that much more important for the organization. And so superpower number one is all about focus and getting very clear on the handful of objectives that are critical for the organization, especially when you're a leader of a team and you're setting the top line or top level objectives for the organization. Now, superpower number two is align and connect for teamwork. And this is where some of the real potential of OKRs starts to become clear because there are a number of cloud-based OKR tools out there that really unlock transparency and collaboration within organizations, including Lattice, Ally, and Cohen, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing those last two correctly, but these are online tools similar to Basecamp or other collaborative tools, but they're built on OKRs. And the idea here is at a glance, you can see all of the OKRs within an organization and every individual team member has their own list of OKRs, the handful of things that they're focused on completing. So even the most junior member of a large organization can log on and see what everybody in the organization is working on. And everybody's using this common protocol so you can see what the CEO is focused on, you can see the top line objectives and key results for the quarter, and you can align what it is that you're working on as an employee or as a team leader or manager within the organization with those top level objectives. And ultimately, even though this isn't a system about just cascading down the priorities from up on high, it unlocks unlocks the ability for individual teams and managers to select their own objectives and key results that are gonna help move the organization forward. And of course, because it's transparent and everybody can see what everybody's working on, there's naturally built-in accountability. So this is a very powerful system for not only keeping everybody aligned, but for allowing everybody to figure out how to help move the organization forward forward. Now, superpower number three is track for accountability. And building on what I just mentioned, OKRs are highly trackable because not only have you defined an objective, but you've defined very measurable key results. And as explained in much more detail in the book, every OKR can be measured using a very simple scoring system. And when a goal is on track for completion, it's marked green. So from a dashboard or an online tool, you can immediately see whether or not something is on track. If it's close but falling behind, it's gonna be orange or yellow, and if it's really falling behind or no meaningful progress is being made or it's stuck in a rut or something like that, then it's gonna be marked red. And managers and team members regularly meet to report on the scoring and the progress of their OKRs. So then at a glance, Everybody in the company can see where teams might be falling behind, where they might be struggling, what's on track, and when there are opportunities to help, you can jump in because not only as a potential team member can you see that another team is struggling, but you can see that maybe your own project has a dependency there and you can jump in and help or if you have relevant expertise, even if it has nothing to do with what you're working on, if you see it's falling behind, you can jump in and help. So this is a very powerful system for not only managing accountability, but allowing team members to jump in and help each other when they recognize that something is falling behind. Superpower number four is stretch for amazing. And the idea here is that it can be tempting when you're defining your OKRs to set your goals low because you want all of your OKRs to be on track and you wanna make sure that you achieve everything and you don't want other people in the organization to see that your goals are consistently falling behind. So because of this temptation, part of the culture behind OKRs is to stretch for some more challenging goals within your framework or what it is that you as a team member or as a manager are attempting to achieve. And so for example, Google defines their OKRs under one of two categories, either committed goals or aspirational goals, also known as stretch goals. So every single OKR is defined as either being committed or aspirational. Now, committed goals are things that are tied to key critical aspects of the business. So product releases, bookings, hiring, other things like that. And these 
specific OKRs are expected to be completed in full. You're expected to get 100% completion and they should be marked green at the end of the reporting period, whether it be a quarter or another period of time. But aspirational goals are very different. While you certainly wanna set things that are achievable and have the potential to be completed, there can be as high as a 40% average failure rate within an organization. And so there's a lot more leeway and flexibility here and teams are actually encouraged to push for these kinds of stretch goals to avoid what I just mentioned where teams might be subtly incentivized to set very achievable goals. Well, you wanna separate the two and have your committed goals and your more aspirational goals so that teams are given an opportunity to chase things that might not be so achievable, but yet very much help to move the organization forward. And as mentioned in the book, when aspirational goals like this are chosen wisely, then very obviously the payoff can be massive. So with all of that in mind, let's continue on to insight number three, how to collaborate using OKRs. Ultimately, the success of any goal setting system like this comes down to execution. And that begins with the leadership team, not only promoting the use of OKRs, but of course, leading by example and establishing their own OKRs and the top level OKRs of the organization so that other people can begin to see the benefits of the transparency and accountability that the system provides. Now, the book also recommends, especially when first implementing OKRs, to have somebody that is the OKR shepherd. And this is an individual who's really driving the adoption of OKRs and making sure that team members are creating their OKRs and that they're conforming to the protocol. So in other words, they're clearly defining their objectives and they're breaking down measurable and actionable key results that really work and can be easily scored and managed over time. And so you wanna have an individual, like I said, especially when you're first bringing on OKRs and trying to use this new system, you wanna have somebody that is an advocate for the use and the correct use of OKRs. Now, when it comes to actually collaborating, Many of the benefits that we've already kind of hinted at really revolve around using cloud-based tools. So when you use a cloud-based system where everybody in the organization can see what everybody else is working on, it makes it much easier for leaders to clearly define the top level objectives and then for teams to connect their own OKRs and their own key results to those objectives. So if they can see what leadership is trying to accomplish, well, they can more easily assign and create their own objectives and key results based on what they're seeing. And so again, rather than having a system where everything is just assigned from up on high, teams can find their own ways to solve those particular challenges or to move the company in the right direction based on what they see coming down from leadership. And of course, the inverse is also true. Leaders can see what teams are working on and they can identify whether or not those things are aligned with the top level goals. And it makes it that much more easy for everybody in the organization to ensure that they're in alignment. They're not working in lockstep. They're not following specific orders all the way down, but it's easier for members in the organization, both looking up and looking down to see if they're aligned, to see if what they're working on ultimately is moving the organization forward. And so as the book describes, the accountability, transparency, and actionable structure of OKRs is what makes this such an incredibly powerful system. You can see exactly what others are working on. They can see what you're working on. You can reduce redundancy. You can jump in when somebody needs help and their project is falling behind. And everybody can help keep each other accountable. And that is why so many successful organizations today are adopting OKRs and have been for quite some time when you look at companies like Intel and Google. This is an incredibly popular approach and it's a highly effective way to move your organization forward. Now, of course, there's a lot more covered in the book that we couldn't get to in this short format. And that includes 
how businesses are using OKRs, how to overcome common challenges when implementing OKRs, and how to use continuous performance management to support the adoption and execution of OKRs. So if you're interested in applying these ideas and these strategies within your own organization, then I highly recommend that you pick up a copy of Measure What Matters by John Doerr. That's it for this episode. If you have any questions or comments about anything that we covered here, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you're interested in learning about more interesting insights from the best entrepreneurial books in the world, then I recommend that you subscribe and visit rickkettner.com. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to connecting with you again in the future.